Hello everyone, you are welcome to the 10th episode of the Manual Reinforced Concrete Design using the RCC Design Excel Spreadsheet. I am Ridwan Ibrahim and in this episode, I will be demonstrating to you how you can design a column using the RCC 53, okay? So the RCC we are using, the template we are using in this case is the um, RCC 53, which is basically the column design okay so um you can do that i've actually showed you how you can have you can determine your column section using this particular rcc 12 which is the bending and axial force and that's what i showed you in um i think episode um episode seven or no i think episode six okay so you can check that as well so in this case we will be checking we'll be using the rcc 53 okay so um, let's just get into it as soon as possible. So um, first of all, you have to deal with the material. Okay. So the material, what is the material for the concrete? That's the, you know, the grid of the concrete. Let's use um, a grid of 30. Okay. Then the FY, that's for steel. Let's use 460. You can use something lesser. Then this should be kept constant. Then the cover to your reinforcement. So let's use 30 mm. Yes, 30 mm should be enough. And then for the maximum aggregate size, let's use 20. And then this section of the column, let's use um, a section of um, 300 by 300. Okay. So this will reduce. You've seen that. Then at the at the face, you know, at the 300 mm face, which is which is um this first one. So how many numbers do you wish to have? I will put two number of reinforcements. That's what I want to have. And that this at this side. Okay, you can see I have two. Then at this side, I also want to have two. So that's four together like that. Okay, so you see I have two at this three hundred mm side, and also I have two at this three hundred mm side. Okay, so um, that's now equal to four bars. All right. So this is what I have decided to use. So we have to check if the design is valid or not. Okay. So moving forward, you have to put the LO, LO, that is the actual length of the column. So what is the length of the column? Uh, we assume that the length of the column is 3000 mm. That is the actual length of the column. And then um, in the Y axis as well, the length of the column is um, 3000. Okay. So um, now we have to fix the top constraints. Okay. So what's the top constraint? Is it fixed or not fixed? So it is fixed in this direction what about the bottom fixed then in the y-axis fixed fixed okay then is it braced n for no and then y for yes so is it a braced column um let's say it is a braced column okay so i'll say y for yes it's a braced column then also this y for yes okay then in this case we have to determine the effective length okay and then your effective length don't forget your effective length has to do with the boundary condition that is when you'll be using the eugene formula okay so it depends on the end condition is it fixed at the top fixed at the bottom fixed at the top free at the bottom and everything like that so that's how you got this boundary condition this is 0 0.75 you can always check your textbook but by default it knows what to fix automatically to calculate your effective length so this is your effective length and then to calculate the slenderness so after that it will now determine if your column is either short or if it is a slender column so in this case it is a slender column okay so let's try to see um, if we can have a short column for example let me increase this to let's say 3600 okay and then let this be 3600 okay now it is still short but let me make this to be unbraced okay let's say it is not braced okay so from here you see that the column is slender it is not short anymore the column is slender okay so however i'll brace it no sorry why it is braced sorry this is where i want to fix why okay it is braced also yes okay so i'll change this back to three thousand and then i'll change this back to thirty thousand okay so since it is braced um it is most likely to be short okay so we have that and then you now need to put your load cases so you can have up to six load cases if that is fine but if you do not need to have up, up to that you can just change it so this you can see it is labeled b1 b2 so you can change the name to load case one okay change this to load case two then leave this as load case three so the b1 b2 is just a name okay so you put the the loading condition you know you can you can just have maybe one load 
condition so if you only have one load condition all you just need to do is clear all of this you know just click backspace and clear them all so that will make your work faster but if you have two just make sure the two are here and clear the rest but here six are here so i'll just leave the six as it is and then i will move forward then um you see this bar arrangement that just comes to your design okay so if you are using load case one you see there is no fit for it it is not passing at all so the load case one is not passing so you just need to do what you need to increase the section of the column okay so if load case two is what i'm using you know, this is load case two this is the XJ load so if load case two is what i'm using it is still failing okay if i'm using load case three 1000 okay so um it is passing but the diameter is very high you can say 32 so um at the end of the day you see that this section is very small for this loading that i'm having over here you can see this load has too much what is 3500 for a column okay so i'll just change this to let's say 600 and then let me change this to um 500 okay Let's change this. Let me just have two load cases. Okay. Let me have two load cases. So I'll clear this. I'll clear this. I'll clear this. And then I will clear this. Okay. So in this case, I'll. Sorry. I'll clear this. Okay. No. I'll clear this. Okay. Okay. So if we have just this, so I'll write l1 so represents load case one and this should be l2 as you know load case two so um this should be better although the moment um we can also fix the moment so you can see this is now doing fine you can see there's no fits because we've actually closed all of this you know we are not using them so we are using this in this case now so you're having 40 25 okay and that is actually because of the moments the moments are actually high yeah, let me use a moment of 25 for this this, let me use a moment of five okay and then here let's use a moment of um 23 sorry let's use a moment of 23 and let's use a moment of um 32 okay and then the bottom moment let me just repeat the same thing okay so this is like that now let's check our enforcement okay so if you check our enforcement now you see that all this one they are you, are you can see no fit basically because we've actually cleared those load cases so we are just using two load cases so for load case one you see that it says we should provide 40 12 and load case two we should provide 40 12 okay so um that is what it is um providing by default so just make sure that you've done the analysis of your column so by doing the analysis of your column you will know the actual axial load you understand you know we did um that's what we did in the first episode that's episode one where we pick a particular example from uh mostly and bungie and then we analyze the frame so we determine the bending moment of the column and the bending moment of the beam we also determine the axial column now we are the shear force and everything like that so you can actually know the axial load of the column so from there you will know exactly what you should feel here you also know what you should feel in the in the moment side okay so when you feel the accurate um when you feel the accurate data here, then you can have the corresponding um, size of reinforcement and then everything like that. So um, that will be the, uh, the end of this video. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, kindly consider giving me a subscription. Thank you for watching.